Hello everyone and welcome to this video on graphing quadratic functions of the form f of x or y equals a times x squared plus b times x plus c where a, b, and c are real numbers and a is not zero. Graphing an equation of that form using properties of parabolas, right? Remember the graph of a quadratic function is a parabola, right? One of those U-looking sh shapes, either opening up or down. Um, and we'll use uh, properties of parabolas, right? So in, the, in this video, I'm gonna start off uh, just kind of going through an overview of what happened in a previous video, where we took a function like this and wrote it in what was called vertex form. And then, you know, show you how they, you don't really need to do that every time. There's actually a, a kind of a shortcut way of graphing this y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Uh, just knowing a few things, a few properties of parabolas. Okay. So on this first page, I'll start, I'm starting off with uh, f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, right? a is not zero, a quadratic function. And I'm going to write this in that vertex form. So hopefully you recall this from a previous video, and if not, please look it up. Uh, just look up vertex form for a parabola, and you'll find plenty of videos on it. So remember the vertex form was this f of x or y equals, you know, some number a, which ends up being the same a as this one. Okay, a times a square times the quantity x minus h squared, and then after the square uh, plus k. All right, where h and k, h and k are the coordinates of the vertex of the parabola. All right, remember the vertex of the parabola is, you know, either that point that's the highest point or the lowest point depending on if it's opening up or opening down. All right, here, here's a couple parabola shapes, All right? And the vertex is that point, you know, the lowest point opening up and it's the highest point uh, when opening down. Right. Additionally, uh, every parabola, and this is another property of a parabola that we'll use later to help us, you know, graph them more easily. Every parabola has an, a line of symmetry or an axis of symmetry. And for our parabolas, that'll be you know, of this form, that's going to be a vertical line. You know, this, this vertical line that cuts the parabola in half, you know, runs through the vertex. Uh, the, the, the graph is symmetrical about this line. Uh, this is called the axis of symmetry or a line of symmetry. Right, and the, the equation for this line is just going to be x equals h. Right? It's, a, it's a vertical line. It'll be a vertical line. So the graph of a vertical line has an equation of x equals some number. And if it's running through the vertex like they are, the x-coordinate of the vertex is h. Right? All these points have an x-coordinate of h. Right? So we have x equals h as the axis of symmetry. Right? So this, this was vertex form. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our, our standard form of a quadratic function here and put it into a form like this, where I have a number times a square plus some other number. And if you remember how I did that last video, I did that through the process of completing the square. Right? So these terms here with the, with the x's, I can't complete the square just yet on these if the lead coefficient is not one. Now I didn't say it wasn't one, but you know, if this was three or negative eight or 20 or one third or something, I couldn't complete the square. So what I'll do in, in order for me to complete the square, right, to get, remember the coefficient on the x squared has to be a positive one, is I just take the two x terms, x squared and x, and factor that lead coefficient out, right? So I'd factor out a, and that would leave me with this. So I'd, f of, I'd have f of x equals 
the a factored out times, and then in parentheses, you know, the 1x squared, and then plus, and then b over a times x, right? Because when I redistribute the a, that would give me bx, right? The a's would cancel in that second term. And now in here, I can complete the square, right? I have 1x squared plus some number times x to the first. So I'm going to leave a little space and then close the parentheses. And we'll complete the square in here. And uh, then the plus c afterwards. All right, now for the completing the square. All right, that's we're going to add it. You know, and I'm only going to complete the square in the parentheses here. And again, if this is unfamiliar to you, please look up another video on it. So I have x squared plus b over a x, and then we're going to add a term in here so that the expression in the parentheses is a perfect square, or a perfect square trinomial. Remember how that's done, is you take the coefficient of x to the first, this b over a. You cut that in half, you multiply it by a half, that'd be b over 2a, and then add that, and then square it, so b squared over 4a squared, 2a times 2a, and then that gets added to complete the square, b squared over 4a squared. Okay, now you got to be careful, all right? If I add this number in here, that completely changes the expression I started with, right? You can't just add 3 or add 5 or minus 4 in, in, in an expression and expect it to be the same value as it was in the beginning. So I have to undo this outside. All right, so look at what happens. When I add this in here, this b squared over 4a squared, if you were to put the a back in, right, if I were to distribute this a back into the parentheses here, I'd have a times x squared, that's this first term, then a times b over a x, that would be the bx, that's the second term, then I have the plus c already. So you see what this a does when I add this b squared over 4a squared? If I were to put the a back in, that would cancel one of the a's in the denominator, and it would add b squared over 4a to this expression. So when I add this in the parentheses, what I really add to this expression I started with is b squared over 4a, meaning that I also have to subtract that. So after all this, I'm going to subtract b squared over 4a. Right, and again, this is, to, this is just to undo what we added when completing the square. Right, because I want my expression to be the same expression that I started with. All right, so I have this minus b squared over 4a. All right, now the whole reason for completing the square, and I know there's a lot of letters here. Right, don't worry about this so much. All right, we're going to get to like a shortcut in a minute. But the whole reason for this completing the square is so now I have, a, I have an expression here in parentheses that can be written as a perfect square. So we have f of x equals... And then this is a, right, the number a times, and then this expression in the parentheses can be written as x plus b over 2a squared, right? Remember it was the variable plus whatever half of that linear coefficient was, that expression squared after completing the square. This, and you can t test it, take x plus b over 2a and multiply it by x plus b over 2a and do all the foiling and combining like terms, you'd get this expression in the parentheses back up here. And then I have the rest of this plus c, you know, minus b squared over 4a. Okay, and if you want to put those together, that's fine, but I'll leave it this way. But this is in that vertex form. Right? I've got a number, a, times a square, plus some other number, right? All this stuff over here, the plus c minus b squared over 4a, that's, that's just a, those are all numbers. That's a, adding another, a number to this, this square. So what's the h? Remember vertex form here. It's a number a, which I have here, a, times x minus h squared. So the number, the number being subtracted from x would be h. This is x plus b over 2a. 
But remember, x plus b over 2a, you could think of also as x minus negative b over 2a, or the opposite of b over 2a. So this is the h, right? This, this minus b over 2a, or negative b over 2a, or the opposite of b over 2a. That's h. And then the value of k is, you know, this number being added after the square, the plus k, the c minus b squared over 4a. Um, I'm not going to worry so much about that. The biggest part of this, right, the one I'm taking the most away from this uh, that will help us graph these quadratic functions real quick is this here. The fact that the x-coordinate of the vertex, right, when I have an equation, a function that looks like this, a, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, the x-coordinate of the vertex I can very quickly get by just taking the opposite of b and then dividing it by 2 times a. All right. So that's what we're going to do. And this also gives us the, the way to write the axis of symmetry very quickly. Remember the axis of symmetry is just the line, the vertical line x equals h. So be x equals this negative b over 2a. Yeah, so after all that, right, we're, again, you're not going to have to do all that. This is the most important part right here, this uh, opposite of b over 2a, right? So when, when I'm asked to graph f of x equals, you know, ax squared plus bx plus c, we're going to follow the, fo the, the, follow the following steps, right? One... Does it open, will the parabola open up or down? That's the very easiest question to answer. Will the parabola open up, all right, so look like this, or down, all right, looking like this? And the question is very easy to answer. If you saw my, um, my last video on, you know, graphing quadratic functions in this form, by changing it to the vertex form. It all depends on the value of a, right? This a here, the lead coefficient. If the value of a is positive, the parabola will open up, right? So if a is positive, right? If a is greater than zero, it's opening up. And if the value of a, right, the lead coefficient is opening, is negative, if it's less than zero, uh, the parabola will be opening down. All right, so that's a very quick question to answer. Will it be opening up or down? Then, what is this axis of symmetry? All right, what's this? What's this line that cuts the parabola in half? This this vertical line that goes through the vertex. What is the equation for that? So, what is the axis of symmetry? I'm going to abbreviate the axis of symmetry AOS from here on out. Right? So if you see AOS, it's axis of symmetry. Well, again, if I have an equation that's in this form, you know, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, the, the x, um, the, the, the axis of symmetry I stated here, right, was, is x equals h, but h, uh, the x coordinate of the vertex, is I take the opposite of b divided by 2a. All right, so take the opposite of the linear coefficient in the numerator divided by twice the quadratic coefficient, the squared coefficient in the denominator. And this is going to be the equation for that vertical line that you know goes through the vertex that cuts the parabola in half. And then once you have the axis of symmetry down, well then you have the vertex. The vertex is easy to find. You know, what's the vertex? All right, so the vertex, remember, is that h comma k. This is the x coordinate of the vertex, right? Negative b over 2a. And then, it, I mean, I, like, I, I wouldn't recommend, you don't have to memorize this. You know, the y coordinate of the vertex would be c minus, you know, b squared over 4a. And you don't have to do that, all right? I would just say, find this number, find, find the negative b over 2a, and then plug it in. 
All right, find the find the output. What is what is the value of this function? What is f at negative b over two a? All right, so just take negative b over two a and then you know plug it into the function and, and get the output. All right, simple as that. All right, uh, then some other properties you know that you come uh, uh, some other things you want to find in most graphs. You'll also be finding for these quadratics. Um, what are the intercepts? All right, so remember for x-intercepts, that's when f of x equals zero, right? So you're solving that equation. You're, you're setting you're setting f of x, the output, to be zero and solving ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So you can really just use the quadratic formula here. Now there's another trick too, is if I know where the vertex is, right, if you know where the vertex is, and you also know if it opens up or down, you'll be able to tell if there are any x-intercepts, right? Uh, so I'll say x-intercepts, you know, if any. There might not be x-intercepts because you could have a parabola that's all above the x-axis or all below the x-axis and never touch the x-axis. Uh, then for y-intercepts, that, that's simple. You know, there's only going to be one y-intercept. And that's, you know, remember when the x-coordinate is 0, 0, comma, and then f of 0, right? whatever f of 0 is. So basically, 0c, right? If I plug in zero for x, you're left with c for y, right? So zero comma c or zero comma f of zero, right? And uh, these points, the x-intercepts would have, you know, some some x-coordinate comma and then zero. I don't know what the x-coordinates are. And again, we'll, we'll question, you know, are there any x-intercepts? You know, where's the vertex and does it open up or down? Will it actually hit the x-axis? And then lastly, we'll you know maybe plot plot some points using symmetry and graph, and I'll explain what this means when we get to an example. All right. Actually, I can explain it real quickly right now. If you have a parabola, and you know here here's you know say here's the axis of symmetry. I remember a AOS. Right? Say that's the axis of symmetry, and this is the vertex. Right. And I know of a point. You know, say there's a point on the parabola over here. Well, if it's symmetrical about this line, what that means is I could take the point that I know, go to the axis of symmetry, right, straight to it, so perpendicular. And then go the same distance across. Notice the little tick marks here. This is the same distance as this distance. Go the same distance on the other side, and you should land on another point and, and plot that point. All right. So if you know one point on on one side of the axis of symmetry, then you should know a point on the other side of the axis of symmetry, and then be able to graph the parabola accordingly. All right. Okay. So I'm going to go through these steps, these questions, you know, what is the, will the parabola open up or down? So basically, what is the lead coefficient? What is the axis of symmetry? This negative b over 2a, x equals negative b over 2a. Then take the negative b over 2a and plug it in and find the output to find the vertex. Then if the graph has any x-intercepts, find those, right? We'll determine if it has any first. And, you know, because if it doesn't have any, there's no point in finding them. Then find the y-intercept real quick, and you know if you know points on one side of the axis of symmetry, you can you can find the points on the other side pretty easily. Just go the same distance on the other side of the axis of symmetry, and then graph. All right. Okay. So let's take a look at an example. So I have several here for you. All right. So the first one I'm, and again I have the same instructions for every example in this video today. Uh, graph the quadratic function using its properties, right? You know, the what, will it open up and down? What's the vertex, axis of symmetry, all that stuff. Intercepts. 
uh, and then base and then the symmetry and then based on the graph you know determine the domain and range and I'll write the domain and range in interval notation if hopefully you're familiar with that by now all right so the function is f of x equals you know x squared minus 4x minus 12 all right so before I get to actually graphing it I've got the function here f of x equals x squared minus 4x minus 12 so that first question you know, will it open up or down? Well, what's the value of a? Well, it's, you know, it's ax squared plus bx plus c. Uh, so I'll write those off to the side here. So the value of a is positive 1, right, 1x squared. The value of b is negative 4. And the value of c is negative 12. And don't forget the negatives. All right, so a is 1 that is positive, that is greater than zero. So the parabola will open up, right? It's gonna look like this. And the vertex will be the lowest point, all right? Great. The uh, second question, what's the axis of symmetry? Right? again, I'll just write AOS. And the equation for the axis of symmetry is, I'll write it a bunch of times, right? I'll write it for every example just so you get the hang of it, right? And you should be writing it out a bunch of times too so you get it in your memory. The opposite of B divided by 2 times A, right? So that's the opposite of negative 4 divided by, and then in the denominator, 2 times 1. So the axis of symmetry is, you know, 4 divided by 2, x, equal, x equals 2. And I'm going to go to the graph here, actually, and I'm going to dot that in. You know, it, it's not actually part of the parabola, right? The axis of symmetry is an imaginary line, but I'm going to graph x equals 2 on my coordinate plane here. And I have it set up. Here's the x-axis, y-axis, uh, so each square represents one unit. So x equals 1, there's x equals 2. And again, I'm just going to dot this in, It's uh, dash it in. It's not actually part, it's not actually there. All right, little dotted line going up, little dotted line going down. There's the axis of symmetry, you know, AOS, x equals 2. All right. Okay, um, then where's the, you know, the vertex should be somewhere on this line. Where is it? All right, All right so three, question, you know, what is the vertex? Remember, that's going to have this x-coordinate, so 2, and then the output when I plug into, you know, so what's f of 2? All right, so we need to find that. So what's f of 2? So I just go through the rule, replace all the x's with 2. That's, you know, 2 squared minus 4 times 2, and then minus 12. So that's 4, then minus 8, then minus 12. So that's negative 4 minus 12, that's negative 16. Okay, negative 16. So the vertex is at the point 2 and then negative 16. All right. So now again, I, I set up, I said my x-axis, right? Now this is, uh, just be consistent here. I have my x-axis where every square is one unit. I'm going to have my y-axis every square be two units because I don't want to go down 16. So I'm going to have every square represent two units. All right, so that first square is negative 2, and then negative 4, negative 6, OK? So it's, again, just be consistent. You know, have your all the squares on the x-axis represent the same distance. All the squares on the y-axis represent the same distance when you're drawing. Uh, negative 6, right? Then negative 8, negative 10, negative 12, negative 14, negative 16 down here. So the vertex is this point right here. All right, there's the point 2, comma, negative 16, as I said earlier. Right? And let me actually label that as well. And I know it's opening up. All right, so this is the this is going to help us a lot with the intercepts, right? Part four. All right, so I'm going to cover up some of this stuff because we actually have a picture of some of that now. So number four, right, the, the intercepts. First, I'm going to ask, does it even have x-intercepts? Yes or no? 
Well, look at where the vertex is. All right, the vertex is at two negative sixteen, and it's I know from earlier it's going to open up. This parabola will open upward. So if I start from here and draw a little U shape opening up, will that hit the x axis? Yeah, it's going to hit the x axis. This graph. So there are inter there are x intercepts. So if the answer is yes, then you're going to be solving that equation. Solve you know f of x equals zero. All right, so we're solving x squared. When is x squared minus 4x minus 12? You know, when does that equal to zero? Now you could use the quad. Now this is a quadratic equation. You know, you could use the quadratic formula since it's in that form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Uh, you could also solve by factoring or complete the square method. You know, however you want, as long, whatever looks appropriate, whatever looks more efficient. Um, this is actually solvable by factoring. Uh, x squared minus 4x minus 12 factors to x minus 6 times x plus 2. And we're getting a product equal to 0. The only way this pro a product is equal to 0, right, is if one of the factors is 0. So either x is 6 or x is negative 2. And check these, of course, check them. Um, let's see, when x is 6, 6 squared is 36. 6 times 4 is 24. 36 minus 24 minus 12 would indeed be 0. And negative 2, right? Negative 2 squared is positive 4. Negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8. 4 plus 8 is 12. Minus 12 is 0. Both of these are good. I've checked them both. All right. So my x-intercepts are 6, 0. Right around when x is 6, the output 0. And negative 2, 0. And I'll, I'll plot those and label them. All right. All right, so 6 for the x. So again, these are one unit. The squares on the x-axis are one unit. 3, 4, 5, 6 for the x, 0 for the y. All right, and I'll label that point. There's 6, 0, and then negative 2, 0 as well. All right, negative 1, negative 2, and there's that point. That'll be on the parabola. And again, I'll, I'll label it. Here's negative two zero. All right, cool. And I mean, this this is honestly enough to graph, make a rough sketch. You know, it's a parabola, this U shape, right? So if you got a point on the right side and the left side of the axis of symmetry, like I do, and the vertex, you can draw a pretty rough sketch of the parabola. Uh, but let's continue on. I still want to find the other intercepts. You know, so those are the x-intercepts. Now the y-intercept, every every parabola will have a y-intercept. Every every quadratic function will have a y-intercept, and that's when x is zero. What's y? Well, that's negative twelve. Remember, I said it was zero c earlier, and c is negative twelve here. So you know, zero minus zero minus twelve. So zero negative twelve. Right? I'll, pl I'll plot that point. Now don't forget, you know, I said every square on the y-axis was two units. And just be consistent. So there's negative eight, negative ten, negative twelve. There's there's the y-intercept. All right, and I'll I'll label that point as well. Zero, negative twelve. Okay, and then finally graph the thing. Now, I like the symmetry. Right, finally we'll graph uh, using symmetry as well. So look at this. You know, this point has its its counterpart on the other side of the axis of symmetry, right? Look at this, you know, from negative two to two, that's four units, and then you see it's another four units to that point on the other side, same distance on the other side. So I can use this that same concept of symmetry to plot another point. See, I've got a point on the left of the axis of symmetry here, this zero negative 12 point. I can plot the same, you know, another point on the other side, the right side of the axis of symmetry, just using the, the concept of symmetry. So what is this? This is two units to the left of the axis of symmetry. So that means two units to the right, there'll be another point. So this point here. And that'll be at, you know, four. All right, that was a zero, negative 12. That's at four, negative 12. And ch check it out, you know, uh, do you believe that that actually belongs? Check it out. When, when the input is four, would the output be negative 12? Well, what's 4 squared? That's 16. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 minus 16 is 0. 0 minus 12 is indeed negative 12. That works. That actually is a point on this graph. 
And now that I've used, uh, I've got all the symmetry used, right? Points on the left correspond to points on the right of the axis of symmetry, and I've got the vertex. I can then make a rough sketch of the rest of the parabola. All right, and I'll, uh, I want to point this out to you too. You know, parabolas aren't pointy. Make a parabola smooth and rounded at the bottom or at the top. And uh, you know, I'm just going to draw again a rough sketch going through these intercepts and other points. And there, there we go. There is a graph of this function f. All right, cool. And that was, you know, again, so five, five simple steps. I mean, it's a lot, five, but you know, just think, you know, does it open up or down? That's easy to identify. Uh, take that negative b over 2a, right? That gives you x, e x equals that is the equation of the axis of symmetry. Then plug in that negative b over 2a and get an output. That'll give you the vertex, the point on the axis of symmetry. Uh, and then depending on where the vertex is and if it opens up or down, you might have x-intercepts. And if you do, great, solve f of x equals zero. You use the quadratic formula or solve by factoring or whatever. Uh, if, if, if not though, if the graph wouldn't hit the x-axis, don't even bother, all right? There's no, there's no point in solving this equation if the answer to, you know, does the, does the function have x-intercepts is no, all right? Don't even bother, but they will have a y-intercept, okay? There will be a y-intercept five in that. And then, you know, use some symmetry, you know? If all you have is the vertex and the y-intercept, you know, use use symmetry to find a point on the other side. Now, if the vertex and the y-intercept happen to be the same point, then just plug in, you know, make a table, you know, just like you would with any other function. Make a table, plug in some other numbers, and find a point. And once you find a point on one side of the axis of symmetry, you can use the symmetry to then find a point on the other side. All right, and then go from there, plot the rest of the graph. Right, but it's really a lot, I feel, I feel this is a lot simpler than, you know, going through the process of putting the function in vertex form uh, and then graphing. All right, and again, it depends on what you like better. Right? Your preference is as good as any. All right, so I've got this, uh, you know, several more examples here. So here I'm asked to do the same, oh yeah, I forgot the domain and range, didn't I? All right, so let's go back, I apologize. Back to this example. Uh, the domain. Remember, the domain is the all all the x coordinates that are used, all the values in the x axis that are used on some point of the graph of the parabola. Uh, that's for for any quadratic function. That's going to be all real numbers. So that's the interval from negative infinity to infinity, right? That's everything. Every x value is the x value of some point on this graph of the graph of this parabola. It's the range that's not all real numbers, right? The range, remember, is the set of all y coordinates, y values that are used. So I'm looking at the y axis. So you see how negative 16 is a y coordinate, but nothing below it is, right? There's no graph down here. So negative 16 is the lowest y coordinate. So I'll put that, the, lo the low end. And then there is no high end, right? Every, every, y, co every y value above negative 16 is used as the y coordinate in some point. So we're going negative 16 to positive infinity. And you know, negative 16 is actually a y coordinate, so I'm including it. It is actually part of the range, a little rectangular bracket there. And infinity always has parentheses on it because it's not a number. Okay, so there's a the domain and range. Wonderful. All right, so now the next example. I have f of x equals, you know, negative 3x squared plus 12x minus 7. Again, I'll go through the same procedure. Put this off to the side. I got the same function here. So the first question is, you know, does it open up or down? Well, I'm going to identify the coefficients, right? A is negative 3, B is positive 12, and C is that negative 7. All right. So A is negative 3. That's less than 0. So, this is going to be a parabola opening down, right? So, it opens downward. Okay, um, and the vertex will be at the top, right? So, now the axis of symmetry, all right? The next uh, easy thing to find using these a, b, c, using the coefficients. Remember, axis of symmetry has the equation x equals the opposite of b divided by 2 times a. So that's the opposite of 12 
divided by 2 times negative 3. So we have x equals, that's negative 12 divided by negative 6, right? That's negative divided by negative, that's positive 2 again. All right, so I know both of these so far had, you know, negative b over 2a was positive 2. That's not always going to happen, right? It can be any number. Um, so don't just think it's always going to be 2, please. All right, so back on my, back on my graph, I'm going to graph that, right? I'm going to put a x, I'm going to put the, I'm going to dot the line x equals 2. And again, I'm going to have the, you know, here I have the x-axis. I'm going to have each square represent one unit. Okay, so x equals 2 is this vertical line here. Again, this is an imaginary line. It's not actually supposed to be here. It's just to indicate to me what the middle of the parabola is going to be at. So there's the axis of symmetry, x equals 2. All right, again. All right, and then back here. Now, what point of the parabola is on this? You know, what's the, what's the vertex? So the x coordinate of the vertex is 2, right? This negative b over 2a. And the y coordinate is f of 2. All right, so I need to find f of 2. So that's negative 3 times 2 squared plus 12 times 2 and then uh, minus 7. All right, so remember you square things first, raise things to the power first. 2 squared is 4. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. Plus, you know, 2 times 12 is 24 and then minus 7. Uh, negative 12 plus 24 is positive 12. Minus 7 is positive 5. So this says the vertex 2, 5. All right. So this time, you know, last time I had the y-axis, you know, the squares represent two units. This time I'm going to go to one, back to one unit. All right. So the squares on the y-axis are all one unit apart. So 5 on the y-axis there's five, one, two, three, four, five. So the, the, the vertex is at this location. All right, and again, I'll la label that point. There's the point two comma five. And that'll be, you know, we know it opens down so that, you know, that's gonna be the highest point on my graph. All right, and that leads me to the next part with the, the, the intercepts. All right, does the, will the function have X intercepts? I'm gonna keep the part about opening down up here. So first I ask the question, does it even have x-intercepts, right? Do I even need to bother? So where's the vertex, right? It's above the x-axis, it's at the point 2, 5. And I know from earlier, it opens down, right? So opening down, it is definitely going to hit the x-axis twice, right? So the answer to that is yes, it will have x-intercepts. So that's when we go into solving the equation, you know, when is f of x equal to zero? So when is negative 3x squared, you know, plus 12x minus 7, you know, when is this equal to, uh, equal to 0? All right, so I solved uh, the last equation by factoring. You know, that's not always possible. Uh, I'm going to solve this equation uh, using the quadratic formula. All right, and we'll, of course, simplify our results. So the quadratic formula, right? This is in that form that you can use the quadratic formula for, right? Everything's on one side, zero's on the other. So remember the quadratic formula, the solutions to this equation are the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times a times c, and then all of that divided by two a. All right, so that's the opposite of 12, so negative 12 plus or minus the square root of you know 12 squared minus 4 times negative 3 times negative 7 and then all of this uh, divided by 2 times negative 3. All right, so that's 12, uh, sorry, negative 12 plus or minus the square root this is 144, all right, and then uh, this will end up being negative, right, because you have negative times negative is positive, but then negative again will make it negative. And what we have, uh, what we have here is 12, 4 times 3 is 12, times 7 would be 84. So that's 144 minus 84, uh, that'd be 60, right? So the square root of 60, and then divided by negative 6. And then of course we can simplify this. This is negative 12 plus or minus, you know, 60 is 4 times 15. So the square root of 4 times the square root of 15, that'd be 2 times the square root of 15. 
and then dividing each of these by negative six, we're getting, you know, or pulling out a common factor. And because the lead up here is negative, I'll pull out a common factor of negative two. So hopefully you're seeing that we'd have, you know, I pull a two out, I pull a two out of negative two out of these. We'll have six plus or minus or minus or plus times the square root of fifteen. And then negative two goes into six, you know, three times. And if you want to, you can divide each of these terms up top by three. You know, six divided by three is two. And plus or minus, you know, the square root of fifteen uh, divided by three, right? Alright, so here are the x intercepts. So one is two plus the square root of fifteen divided by three. Again, not the square root of five, right? The three is not the square root, you don't divide these. Comma zero. And the other one's two minus the square root of fifteen divided by three, comma zero. And if you'd like, you know, that square root of fifteen uh, divided by three. You know, you're like, hey, what what is that? Let's get an approximation here. Well, let's see, two plus the square root of fifteen divided by three. So one of the intercepts is at about three point two nine. So that's about three point two nine, comma zero, a little more than three. And the other one, the two minus square root of fifteen over three, that's at about zero point seven one. Right, so a little less than one comma zero. So I'm going to do my best to rough, roughly estimate those on my graph. All right. So uh, one's at about th one of the x-intercepts is about three point two nine. Right. So here's three. Here's four. All right. So maybe about here. Maybe almost like there. Maybe you know, something between three and four. There's one of the x-intercepts. And I'll, I'll label it. All right, there's. 2 plus the square root of 15 thirds, uh, divide, uh, comma 0. And then the other one is at about 0 0.71, right? Something between 0 and 1. So here's 0, here's 1, and we're looking at, you know, about 0 0.71, maybe about there. Right. So, but, but it should be the same distance, right? This, this is about 1.29 units and to the right of the axis of symmetry, and this one's about 1.29 units to the left of the axis of symmetry. And again, I'll, I'll label the point to minus the square root of 15 over three, comma zero, that point there. And this should be enough to draw a rough sketch, right? You have the vertex, you have a point on either side. Um, that's that's pr enough to draw a pretty good a rough sketch of the, of the parabola. But I can also find the y-intercept very easily which I'll do at the very bottom of this page, which a uh, y-intercept is a heck of a lot easier. It's zero, negative seven, right? Because if x were zero, your output would be negative seven. So I'll plot that. So one, two, three, four, five, six. There's negative seven. Plotting that point, labeling it. Okay. And we can plot another point, right? Part five is the graph, right? Part five is graph. I'll just put that here, right? Graph. Right. Um, I know the point zero, negative seven is on the parabola, right? I can use the symmetry. That is how many units from the axis of symmetry. That's two units left. So two units to the right, there should be another point. And that'd be at this point here, that's at four, negative seven. And you can double check. You know, plug in four for X. Uh, this would be negative 48, right? 4 squared is 16 times negative 3 is negative 48. And then 12 times 4 is positive 48. So those make nothing, and then minus 7 is negative 7. So 4 and negative 7 is a point on this. And then I've used the symmetry and got the vertex and got all these points on the left and right of the axis of symmetry. I can make a rough sketch of the parabola. And there you go. There's the graph of this this f this function f, right? Called f here. Great. Same steps over and over again, right? I'm doing the same thing to graph all these. All right. And I've just got one more example. Uh, let me get the domain and range of this up real quick. All right. Domain for any quadratic function is going to be all real numbers. Right? You can plug in anything you want for x, and there's going to be some y value. 
it's the range that's not all real numbers for a quadratic right so you're looking at the y values now there is no lowest y value this time right there is no low end so I'll indicate that with negative infinity all right the graphs going down forever but all the y values now the highest one that's actually used here is 5 right that's a y coordinate and nothing above that so from negative infinity to 5 always parentheses on infinities and you know a bracket on 5 because 5 actually is a y coordinate 5 does belong to the range all right and I've got one last example And going through the same procedure, I'm asked to graph and then state the domain and range, you know, graph using properties. f of x equals x squared plus 6x plus 9. Um, okay, and then I'm going to draw then my separate sheet of paper. Oh, it looks like I lied. I have one more example after this. All right, I'll try to do, through, I'll try to do it real quickly. i just looking through my sheets here. All right, so... Uh, same steps, right? same steps. I'll put that off to the side. Or we'll come back to the graph paper later. All right. So one, does it open up or down? So A is one, B is six, C is nine. You know, A is one. That's positive. So the parabola, when I'm done graphing it, will be opening upward. All right. Next, the axis of symmetry. The equation for that is x equals this negative b over 2a. So the opposite of 6 divided by 2 times 1. We have x equals negative 3. See, it's not always 2. All right. Okay, so I'm going to put that on my graph. Right? So back to the graph paper here. and Again, I'll have the x-axis. I'll have all the squares on the x-axis represent one unit. So this is 3 left here, negative 3. And I'll dot this imaginary axis of symmetry in here. This line that's going to go through the vertex, right? Cut the parabola in half. There's the axis of symmetry. X equals negative three. Okay. Next, we can very easily find. All right, so I'll shove in that back. I'll find the vertex. So it's going to have an x coordinate of negative three, and the y coordinate of, you know, what's f? What's the value of this function at negative three? So I need to find that. All right, so that's negative 3 squared plus 6 times negative 3 and then plus 9. So this is 9 plus negative 18. So 9 minus 18 is negative 9 plus 9. That's 0. So the vertex is actually um, an x-intercept as well. It has a y-coordinate of 0. And if that's the case, that's going to be the only x-intercept. You'll see that in a second. All right. So I'll plot that point. Right. So negative three zero right there on the on the x-axis. I'll label it negative three comma zero. Right. So there's the vertex, and I know it opens up. Well, remember the vertex is you know if it's opening up, that's the lowest point, and if it's opening up, it's not going to hit the x-axis anywhere else. All right, so when I ask the next question about, you know, the x-intercepts, you know, does it have x-intercepts? Well, yes, but that's it. All right, if the vertex is on the x-axis, that's going to be the only x-intercept. Okay. So I don't have to go through and solve the f of x equals 0 if I don't want to. And if you tried, you know, if you said, when is x squared plus 6x plus 9, when is that equal to 0? The only answer is negative 3, when x is negative 3. All right, and then y-intercept, we can find that, right, and very easily. And the y-intercept is 0, 9, right? If I plug in 0 for x, you're getting 9 back, so I'll plot that. All right, so again, I'll have I'll have the I'll have the y-axis be one unit squares. So one, two, three, four, five. So one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and plot that point. Label it. There's the point zero nine, and that should be enough to graph the parabola. Really, 
All right, I should be able to graph it now. All right, because I have a vertex and a point on one of the sides of the axis of symmetry. All right, because if I have a point on one side of the axis of symmetry, I should be able to easily find a point on the other side. So if there's that point zero 0,9 there, all right, the point zero 0,9 is on the graph, that's how many units away from the axis of symmetry. That's, you know, one, two, three units to the right. So three units to the left of the axis of symmetry, there should be another point. All right, and that would be at negative six, nine. And double check, you know, when x is negative six, would the output be nine? Yes, because negative six squared is 36, positive 36, and then six times negative six is negative 36. Those would make zero, and then plus nine would give me nine. All right, now that I have the vertex, all the intercepts, and you know, points on either side of the axis of symmetry, I can make a, a reasonably rough sketch here and again, not pointy, make it curvy at the bottom um, of the parabola, right? Going that way forever and that way forever. Okay, great. And the domain and range, right? The domain for any quadratic, as I've mentioned, is all real numbers. The range is not all real numbers, right? So all the, look at the y values. <clears throat> None of the negative y values are used. There is a lowest one, right? It starts off at y equals zero, right? The y coordinate of zero is the lowest one. And there is no highest y value used, right? It goes up forever. So from zero to infinity, uh, including zero, right? Zero is actually the y coordinate of a point on this graph. So zero does belong to the range and of course parentheses on your infinities. Great. All right, as I said, I have one more example, I lied earlier. I didn't really see my papers that I wrote. <laughs> so one more example, all right, and of graphing a function of you know f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, negative three x squared plus nine x minus eight. And let's 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 go through the steps, the same steps I've done for all of them. All right, move the graph paper off to the side for a bit. So the first step, you know, will it be opening up or down? So the value of a is negative three, the value of b is positive nine, the value of c is negative eight. So a is negative three. That is negative. So this is this is gonna be a parabola when I'm done graphing it. This is gonna be a parabola opening down, right? The vertex will be the highest point. Okay, next, it's easy to find that axis of symmetry that's the x equal the, the line vertical line x equals negative b the opposite of b over 2a so that's the opposite of 9 uh, divided by 2 times negative 3 all right so that's negative 9 divided by negative 6 so that's positive 3 halves right this is not a nice whole number or a nice integer like the last couple of examples right 9 6 were reduced to 3 halves one and a half okay all right, so what I'm going to do, all right, what I'm going to do, and just be careful, the x-axis here, I'm gonna have each square on the x-axis represent half a unit, all right, just because this ends up being a nice half. So here's one half, and then that, you know, so every two squares represents one full unit, all right, the way I'm writing this one. Then there's two halves, and then here's three halves, okay, and then four halves, or two, and then five halves, and so on. So x equals three halves, one and a half units. I'll do that little dot, dotted imaginary line, the axis of symmetry, all right, the vertical line that's going to go through the vertex and, you know, cut this parabola in half. x equals positive three halves. All right, now I'm going to plug that in. Uh, to the function, plug that into the rule, find the output, and get the vertex. All right, so keeping this over here. So the vertex right, is going to have the x coordinate of 3 halves, and then the y coordinate will be the value of this function f at 3 halves, or f of 3 halves. So I need to find that. You know, what's, what's f of 3 halves? So that'd be negative 3 times 3 halves squared plus nine times three halves, 
and then minus 8. All right, so this might involve some addition and subtraction of fractions. And remember, when you add and subtract fractions, you need a common denominator and all that. Let's go through here. Now, 3 halves squared, 3 halves times 3 halves would be 9 fourths times negative 3 would be negative 27 fourths. Then you have plus, you know, 9 times 3, 9 over 1 times 3 over 2, you just multiply the numerators and denominators, would be 27 halves minus 8. Now what I'm going to do is, you know, get all these to have a common denominator. And that would the least, you know, because you're adding and subtracting. When you're adding and subtracting, you need a common denominator. So that would be 4 here, right? The, the LCD is 4. So the first fraction, I'm going to keep the way it is. I would multiply the second fraction by 2 over 2, right, to get the denominator to be 4. So that would be plus, you know, 54 halves, or 54 fourths, sorry, 2 times 27, 54 fourths. And then that last number, 8, right, that's like 8 over 1, right? I would multiply the top and bottom by 4 to get the denominator to be 4. So that's minus 32 fourths. And when you're adding and subtracting, all the denominators are the same. That denominator will stay the denominator. And, you know, so 4, 4, 4. You just combine the numerators. Now negative 27 plus 54, that's positive 27. And then 27 minus 32, that'd be negative 5. So negative 5 fourths. All right, so the, the output's negative 5 fourths. So the, the vertex is at 3, you know, 3 halves for the x-coordinate, 1 and a half. And then positive 5 fourths, or I'm sorry, negative 5 fourths um, for the y-coordinate. Right. Okay, so uh, now I could, I could do this where every, uh, every square on the y-axis represents, you know, a fourth of a unit. Um, I'm not really going to do that though because I see what the y-intercept is going to be. You know, it's going to be 0, negative 8. And if I had every y square on the y-axis represent a quarter of a unit, I'd have to go down 32 of them uh, to plot 0, negative 8. So I'm going to have, just for the sake of graphing, I'm going to have every square on the y-axis represent one unit again. All right. So there's 1, 2, right, negative 1, negative 2. All right, so we have to kind of eyeball this now. It's not going to be perfect, but, uh, you know, so input 3 halves, x is 3 halves, negative 5 fourths. That's negative 1, you know, negative 1 and a quarter, right? Negative 1.25. So that would be around here, right? Uh, have a, you know, 3 halves for the x, and then between negative 1 and 2, a quarter of the way between negative 1 and 2, so maybe about here. Right, this point right here. Right, I mean, I know it looks like negative one and a half, but you know, the, the, the dot got pretty big. Um, but I'll label it so we know exactly what the coordinates are. All right, so this point right here is three halves for the x, negative five fourths for the y. All right, that's the vertex. That's going to be the, the highest point on this parabola because we know it's opening down. All right, so now to the next part on the intercepts. All right. First off, the question, does it even have x-intercepts? Will it even hit the x-axis? You know, because if it, if it doesn't even hit the x-axis, there's no point in solving f of x equals 0, right? There's no point in solving that quadratic equation. Well, think about it. All right. Again, I left the part 1 up. There's the vertex, right? It's below the x-axis. It has a y-coordinate of negative 5 fourths. And it's opening down. That's going to be the highest point, and all other points are going to be below it. So you see, if I just envision a parabola opening down, it's not going to touch the x-axis. So the answer to that question is no. It does not have x-intercepts. So there's no reason to solve any equations here. I'm done with the x-intercept talk. All right. Now the y-intercept, I know what that is, right? Every, every one of these quadratic functions will have a y-intercept, and that'd be 0, negative 8, right? If x was 0, these would be gone, you'd have negative 8 left. And remember I set it up so that the squares on the y-axis were one unit, so there's negative 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, there's negative 8, right? So there's, there's the point on the y-axis, 0, negative 8, I'll label it. 
And then just as before, all right, when you have the vertex and a point on either side of the axis of symmetry, you have enough information to use symmetry uh, to be able to graph it, right? So I can jump to the last part now. Um, now pay attention, remember these are half unit squares, right, on the x on the x axis that I've set up. Alright, so here's the point zero, negative eight. That's on the graph. That is, you know, one, two, three squares away from the axis of symmetry, which is a one and a half units, right? That's three halves units. So one, two, three squares to the left, one, two, three squares to the right will be another point. Let me label that. But the coordinates, remember, my squares were half a unit, so that's two, that's, you know, four halves, there's five halves, that's six halves, or three, right? This would have the coordinates three, negative eight. And double check, you know, when, when x is three, would the output be negative eight? You know, three squared is nine, times negative three would be negative 27. Nine times three is 27, those add up to zero, and then you have minus eight, yes. Okay. Uh, and then, now that I have the vertex and a point on either side of the axis of symmetry, I can draw a rough sketch of the parabola, and something like this. Yeah, and there's the graph of F. Right. Wonderful. All right. So yeah, some crazy fractions showing up there, and you know, no x-intercepts, but that that's going to happen sometimes. You know, especially you know, just pay attention to where the vertex is, and whether or not the parabola opens up or down. And then finally, the domain and range, right? The domain is all real numbers for all of these, right? You can plug in whatever you want. The range, and look at the y values. Now, there, there is no lowest y value, right? These go down forever. So the low end is at, you know, negative infinity. And then as you move your way up, you know, the, the, the highest point, you know, the largest y coordinate used here is this negative 5 fourths. And you know negative infinity parentheses, and negative five fourths is actually part of the range, right? Because it is actually used as a y coordinate for one of the for that point on the top, that vertex. All right. All right. So the best thing to take away from this, you know, when you're looking at y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, um, you know, look at a, look at the co the lead coefficient. If it's positive, it'll open up. If it's negative, it'll open down. Then. A very important thing to take out of that is, you know, do the opposite of b divided by 2a, that negative b over 2a. That'll give you the equation for the axis of symmetry. And when you plug it in and get the output, then you'll have the vertex. And then from there, you know, you know where the, if you know where the vertex is and if it opens up or down, you'll know if it has x-intercepts or not. And if it does have x-intercepts, find them, right? Just set the, set the expression equal to zero, set the output equal to zero, and solve. You, you can use the quadratic formula or factoring or completing the square or whatever. Um, and the y-intercept is a zero c, right? Zero comma c, that, that, co that constant term. And if you have points on one side of the axis of symmetry, you should be able to find a point on the other side of the axis of symmetry and then go from there and graph, graph a rough sketch of the parabola. Wonderful. And as I like to say at the end of these videos, you know, do the best you can to learn the material on your own before you go looking for help. Uh, I have found over the years that people that take the time and the effort to learn something on their own tend to remember that material better and for far longer and are more proud of themselves for it, have a boost in confidence and all that. This is a good thing. So of course, read the material, right? Read the author's examples. Uh, perhaps even try to work out the solutions to an author's example before you see how the author did it and then compare your work with the authors and you know see if you can learn from some mistakes there obviously do tons of exercises practice problems you know practice makes progress it's the only way you can get better at something um, and you know check for solutions to those if they're made available to you so you can you know see how you're doing check your progress and don't just give up on a problem or, or, or an exercise after one or two attempts, you know, very often in mathematics, there are several approaches that'll work for any particular problem. You know, so if after several approaches to a problem or several problems, um, you're having still having trouble, I would suggest you actually go back and read the material again, maybe even a third time, more slowly and deliberately, and take good notes, or even just take notes for the fir for the first time, because if you've been working on problems as you should, um, you know, you'll you'll see 
more of what the author wants from you, you'll have a better idea as to what the author expects from you in that section. And also you'll see more about, you know, hey, what, what material does the author find important? So when you go back and read again, or maybe even that third time, uh, you'll know better what to look out for. You know, you'll see the important things pop out at you better. And maybe even things will pop out at you that didn't the first time through. All right. Uh, but if, and it'll make the problems, you know, that much easier to work on. But if after all that, you know, if after several read-throughs of the material and several attempts at problems, you're still not getting it, still having trouble, you know, it, it is not a sign of weakness whatsoever to go out looking for help. That is what other people are there for, you know, to help you. So ask a teacher, a tutor, a friend, you know, someone in your class who you know knows the material well and is willing to help. Uh, look for supplemental materials online. There's tons of it out there. Look for videos online. You know, video. There's tons of those too. You know, videos like this, or plenty of other videos out there that are better than this one. I assure you, they're out there and they're easy to find. And just keep at it. Stay persistent. Keep practicing. Don't give up. And above all, and I think this is the hardest thing for most people, stay positive. You know, believe in yourself and believe in your ability to make it through whatever frustrations or failures you're having or mistakes you're you're going through at the moment. Because it's in those times that you're struggling and failing and making mistakes, it's in those moments when you're frustrated that you have the opportunity to learn the most and also learn the most deeply. Because if you can persevere, if you can persist and, and, and make it through that frustration, work through your frustrations and learn how to fix your mistakes, and you'll remember that material far better and far longer than someone who just got it right the first time and breezed through and never gave it a second thought. Okay, so please stay persistent keep practicing, stay positive, and, and don't give up. And, I, and I'm just sure you'll get it. All right, and thank you very much for watching.